guys, welcome to Rotorite. I'm Bobby FPV, and I'm here with my friend Manifest George. And today we are doing the ultimate collab. That's right. We got a sick McLaren, we got a helicopter coming, and we're just gonna get the coolest FPV drone shots here. So, have you had an FPV drone fly around never, you before? Never. So, these drones are really special. They can go all upside down, any orientation, and they can also fly really fast. So, okay. you know, we're gonna probably have you be hauling at like 60, 70, maybe faster. Okay. And the shots, like, the, the drone will get like this close to the car, right? And oh, just yeah. be hopping from side to side. You're not gonna hit the car? No, nah, I'm not gonna hit the car, bro. You're good. But you wear like the goggles and everything. I don't know what you call that. Yes, the, the goggles is correct. So yeah, yeah so I'll have sick. the FPV goggles on yeah. and I'll be here and then I will have, we'll be in walkie talkie. So we'll yes. always have direct communication with you yeah. and also the helicopter pilot. Yeah. So this is a BTS video. BTS stands for behind the scenes. So you guys are going to see behind the scenes of what goes into making a really unique FPV video. Cause I mean, there's been so many really amazing FPV videos out there, right? But Absolutely. I don't think for all of them that we've been able to look, you know, Behind, behind the curtains and see what's going on. So yeah. we're gonna walk you guys through some of that. Um, this is the Tura Aerials Centurion. For this one, we're gonna use a bunch of different tools to make the ultimate video. So it's gonna be like a one minute Instagram video. Yeah, nice. Well, so, so what I wanna get out of the shoot is just to have fun, to be honest with you. I mean, we wrap cars, accelerate motorsports, accelerate wraps. We have cleaning care products, but most important, man, I just wanna have like cinematic shots. I wanna see the car flying, the drone flying, and just having fun out here, man, and uh, just getting those amazing shots. And I'm so excited, man, because like I've seen your footage, I've seen your content, Thank and you. you're an absolute beast, man. Thank so you, bro. For you to give me this opportunity to like just, you know, film and have some fun out here in the dirt in the middle of nowhere, man, I've been looking forward to this. Let's do this. <laughs> We're starting the shoot right now. We're about to get ready for the first shot. We're gonna have the RX-8, the McLaren, and the helicopter. The two cars are gonna be driving side by side, and the helicopter is just gonna be right in the middle of them. We have the best pilots out here, the best drivers, and also, I think I'm a decent FPV pilot. So, safety first, like we said in the safety meetings. Communication is so important on these shoots, like we talked in our safety meeting. Communication is so important just so that we are all on the same brain wavelength. Safety first, kids. Um, but besides that, let's make a movie, bro. Everyone can get into position, drone is launching. All right, positions, drone is launching. And drone is off, drone is off, let's go. Get the helicopter in place. Helicopter in place. All right, got my All right. No, maybe they need to wait for the helicopter. Hey, cars, hold on, wait one second, wait one second, cars. Okay. Send it, send, send it. Send it, send it, let's go. Helicopter middle of cars. Helicopter get in the center of the cars, get in between them. Everyone needs to be tighter. Everyone get needs tighter, to be get tighter. Speed up, speed up, speed up. That was a great shot. Tell them to come back. All right, come back, come back. Just make a big turn and just keep keep, just, keep following, keep following the car. Just make a big turn, keep following. I'm just gonna stay on the shot. Just, oh, that was Drone landing. Two feet, one foot, you're down. Thanks. I want the helicopter to start hovering behind, in the middle and then just go. Three, two, one, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Remember, tight formation, tight formation, helicopter in the middle, helicopter in the middle. Okay, start turning. Start turning, Come start on. turning. Left turn, yep. Turn left, turn left. Helicopter, get closer if they can. Helicopter, if you can get closer, let's do it. That's fine. Gotcha. Copy, copy. This is sick. This is what I want. This is good, this is good. Let's keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. Perfect. That's the shot. Just finished the first shot. We just got three quick batteries. Helicopter, McLaren, RX, RX-8 is what I think it is. And right now we're just gonna do some car spots. So just the cars. I think we're gonna do McLaren first and the RX-8. And we can really push it, really push to get the, you know, 10 out of 10 shots. Just so that we have little cutaways that we can go to of just really, really high energy of the car. I think they're just debriefing the first shots and then we're gonna go back up. It's gonna be sick. For this shot, Kai's gonna be doing some donuts. And then when on, on our queue, he's just gonna kind of, I don't know, drift it out and just take off. And it's gonna be a really nice breather in the video. So we need a, a shot where it's high energy, high energy. Boom, he takes off, the drone sits back. 
That's pretty. All right, send it. All right, send it. And take off away from us. Take off away from us. Wait, 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 when he's done. <laughs> take off, take, take off. off. Take off, take off, take off. Towards the mountains, towards the mountains. <laughs> so tight, bro. It looks so badass when you did that. Yeah. When you see it on video, you're gonna be like, We're swapping cameras. We are now using the FreeFly Wave, which if you don't know what this is, this camera is an ultra slow-mo camera. So we're gonna be shooting in about 350 frames per second just because we need more light and we just don't have that right now, which I don't know how we don't have more light, but this camera needs a lot of light. Um, and, in, and if you were to crop the sensor more, this camera can shoot up to 9,000 frames per second, which is such an awesome addition to the video to have the zoom, to just like slow down time for you know however long. We're gonna get the helicopter blades really just like almost at a standstill. So I'm really excited to try this camera. Also just thinking about the Tura Aerial Centurion, it's really awesome that, I mean, any camera really can fit on here. Whether you have like a Komodo, a Pocket 4K, or even like this Wave camera, I mean, it fits on there phenomenally. So let's go ahead and get to it. We're gonna do the same thing we did in the beginning with two cars and the helicopter. It's gonna be sick. Go, go, go. Keep the weeds a little tighter if they can. Keep the weave tighter, keep the weave tighter. Uh, tell him turn around and do it turn coming back. Turn around and come in, do it the coming back. Do it coming back. Yeah, go go towards home. Yep. Yep. Towards home. Yep. Keep that weave tight. Keep that weave tight. Perfect. Do, do the same thing. Just turn around and keep going. Turn around and keep going. Do it again. Do it again. Quick, quick, quick. Keep those weaves tight. You don't have to go as far out. You don't have to go as far out. They can come back. All right, you guys can come back. Drone is coming in for landing. Dude, the shots are phenomenal. You guys are killing it. All right, we just finished up getting all of our shots with the Black Magic and the Wave camera. We're gonna go back to our Airbnb now, and I'm gonna walk you through how I, you know, organize my clips and, and the order that I think the clips that we shot should go in. We need to pack up because we're losing sun. Shout out to Manifest George right here, bro. He's the man. Go check out all of his businesses. There'll be links in the description to everything. I mean, hey, you guys shout saw- Shout out to you, bro. Thank you're... you so much, Dude, bro. Of course, you have bro. no idea. This made our entire day. Awesome, Honestly, bro. This guy's the man, the best drone specialist. I Thank think you, that's bro. the term for it, but bro, he's amazing. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. So let's go ahead and get to it. So let's go ahead and get into how I would order these clips. Um, I've pulled some selects here from all of the flying that we did yesterday. Um, and I'm just gonna run you guys through kind of, like I said, the order that I'd put these clips in so that we have a good mix of action and breathing and how, uh, how much time, how much ratio of like action to breathe shots I think there should be. A lot of FV videos out there are really awesome, but it's just all action, all action. Action is great, but it needs to be supplemented with like some room to breathe. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw a quick LUT on just so we can see more what's happening in the videos. If you do need to find some LUTs, you can go to the Limetry Color tab, go to Creative, and then just kind of scroll through here and you can find different LUTs. Right now, the LUT is just for viewing just so I can see what's going on in the clip better. All right, so let's use this clip for example. I am very high action chasing the helicopter in the car and that FPV shot I got right there where it's like fast movement, to just pulling back and letting the car drive and the helicopter fly almost far and out of frame, that gives it room to breathe. So if we're talking about action shots versus a breathing shot, an action shot would be I'm chasing the car, I'm right on it, it's kicking dust, and then a breathing shot would be kind of like an establishing shot. You can kind of think of an establishing shot as a breathing shot where it's just like not much movement, just sitting, kind of letting whatever action was just there go away in the distance. So we gotta start with an opener shot and Opener shots, I think, should always breathe to action. So I'm gonna find a shot where I was diving down. You can see in this shot, I have started up really high. And I mean, the car just looks like a tiny little speck on the screen. Super high establishing shot, and the drone is just diving down onto the car. And I think right there, when I do the little roll, I think that can be a cut point to another shot. So when I'm thinking about how I wanna order my clips, I always want to have the movement of the end of the last clip be similar to the movement of the beginning of the next clip that I'm gonna do. There are times where you can you know, do something where it's left to right, but just make sure that it flows nicely. You never want a cut to feel abrupt. So we have our first establishing shot in the timeline. Let's go ahead and find the next shots. I think what would be a really cool shot to add 
early on is quick yaw motion and just instantly we're gonna have a, a super slow-mo shot of a helicopter. Most people are probably gonna expect this video to be just a lot of real-time, fast-paced shots where it's just constant go, 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 right? But I think if we throw a curveball kind of right in the beginning of the video where it's all of a sudden just a poof, we're just slow, we're just stopping time for a second. I think that'll help the video be a little bit more engaging just right off the bat. Later in this video, we will walk you through how to color correct and color match shots a little bit. Um, so right now the, cut, the transition does look a little bit abrupt just because the colors are drastically different. The Wave camera is a pretty bad like looking camera, but it does one thing really well and that's the super high frame rate. So it's something that a lot of people are willing to work around. You guys can kind of get an idea of how it's gonna look. That's kind of the motion. And this is a shot that we're gonna slow down time for. Let's go vroom. Right after that shot, I want a super high speed action shot of the car with the helicopter. So let me go ahead and find one of those shots for you guys. So I'm gonna use some of the black magic footage just cause it is real time. I think we're gonna use this shot right here. This shot is really pretty because it shows a really, first off, a really nice lens flare in the camera lens. And also you kind of get a little bit of a wider of the helicopter chasing the McLaren. Boom, that's a good shot there. Let's see, do I go to the car? Nice. Later I will go and change a lot of the slow motion and some of the timings of the clips to try to get it under one minute. So we had two cars, we had the McLaren and a Mazda RX-8 and then a helicopter. So kind of want to tell a story, like I don't want a car to just kind of come out of nowhere. So, so far we have shown off the McLaren, the helicopter, um, and I think now is a good time that we could introduce the RX-8. So I know I have a really good shot of the McLaren helicopter and RX-8 in one shot. So I'm gonna use that now because there's a drift shot of just the RX-8 later that I wanna use. And I think that can kind of be a good way to introduce it is if we have all three together. So here's a solid clip I think we can use. And then I think here we can cut to the, actually this shot later that I had right after of just the McLaren and the RX-7. Just so we can kind of transition the helicopter out of the picture for right now. And it looked like in the last video, I was like about to do a right turn. So we're gonna start the shot right when I kind of do the right roll. Yeah, that looks good. Keeps the same energy and nice. Yep, so now we have introduced the RX-8. Now we're gonna transition to the drift shot. Boom. I love this shot right here so much where it just rolls over the car as he's doing a donut. Now as I fly over him, I can use that transition to transition to the last shot since we only have 12 more seconds in this video. So now we're going to find the last shot and I want to use a shot that we used earlier. Yep. Oh, that is so close. That is sick. I'm gonna drag this to the end. Just good high energy for right at the end. You know, we'll have the music be going boom, boom. And then right when I make that move, we'll have it slow down. Boom, perfectly at one minute. So that's how I would order these clips. I'm gonna definitely change some of the shots out when I have more time to just like, just lock in on the edit. But I hope you guys kind of understand a little bit how I think about doing a action edit where it's a lot of action needed, but also definitely leave room to breathe. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this LUT that I have on there. So now it looks super ugly. Something that is really important in these, we we'll call it like cinematic FPV videos, is the colors because the colors like make or break a video. If you have really bad color grading, it is like super jarring to the video. So I'm gonna have my friend Kima walk you guys through how to do some basic color grading, basic color correction, and maybe a little bit of color matching as well. Um, color grading takes a lot of time, so we're just gonna walk through the very basics of it. What's up guys, I'm Kima. I'm gonna walk through a little bit of basic color grading tips slash color matching. This is not gonna be a super comprehensive color grading video. It's gonna be pretty minimal. Um, it's just gonna get you to a, a natural look. It's not gonna get you anything cinematic like that. That's gonna be something that's gonna be varied from clip to clip, camera to camera. And that's something that you're gonna have to do on a case by case basis. So let's hop into Premiere real quick. So here you go, on Premiere you have a couple different tabs. What you're gonna wanna look for is the Lumetri color tab. And so this is just a shot of the McLaren in the desert. We did a pretty good job of getting the exposure correct on set. And that's really where color grading starts. You have to make sure you do it right in production. What you wanna do first is come into your curves tab right here. So right under here, RGB curves. As you can see, here you have a line and a grid. We're gonna make three points to start off. Right here where it intersects with the grid, one more, and the final one right here. And so this gives us our three points. What we're making is called an S-curve. This is the most basic form of adding contrast to a log profile. You're gonna bring your shadows down, you're gonna bring your highlights up, 
And right here you have your midpoints. And so you can kind of mess with that and get some interesting stuff going on. You kind of have to play with it and get a look that feels right to you. And so as you can see right here, it's a little bit underexposed. So we're gonna bring some, some exposure back into that. We're up 0.4 stops. And we're gonna add a little bit more contrast with the contrast slider just to give it a little bit more. So it brings some contrast back into the image, brings some exposure in. From this point, what we're gonna to wanna to do is go into the curves tab and kind of give it just a little bit of a stylized look. So what I like to do is to go into the hue versus saturation tab. So what hue versus saturation is, is you pick a color range and you can change the saturation of that color range. As you can see here, we have the full spectrum. And so what we're gonna do is use the color picker tool right here, this eyedropper, and we're gonna select the sky. And I like to bring that just a little bit up just to boost some of that sky. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna boost some of the dirt just to give it a nice little vibe to it. Now we're gonna go into hue versus hue. Hue versus hue allows you to change the color. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna eye drop the sky here. And we're gonna change this just a little bit more to a teal aquamarine tint. So once again, it's, it's a very subjective process. There's no hard and fast science to it. So we're gonna go down here to hue versus luma. This allows you to change how bright a specific color range is. So what I might do is select the, uh, the sand down here, and I might bring that down just a little bit just to kind of give a little bit more contrast so the car sticks out. As you can see with that, it just brings the sand down in darkness just a little bit. The important thing to note is you don't want to overdo anything. Too much of a good thing is always bad. That's about all I would do to this clip. This is the before, so this is the flat V-Raw, and then this is the after. This is a nice contrasty image that looks pretty good. And as mentioned before, this is purely a baseline. This is by no means the final result. And as you're gonna see in the final video, we're gonna do a little bit more color grading to this to give it an actual look to it. This is just a basic color correction from Log. All right, so that's the black magic footage done. And now we're about to move on to the wave footage. So the wave camera is a little bit different. It's gonna require a little bit more finesse, but the idea is color matching. What you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're doing is matching the hues of the wave to the hues that we set up with the black magic. You use the exact same arsenal of tools and you just do your best job to make them look as similar as possible. So those are the basic steps of how I would go about making an FPV action cinematic video. So we walked you guys through, you know, shot order and you know, letting things breathe. And then Kimo walked us through how to color grade and color match. I'm gonna go ahead and just grind on this edit for, I don't know, 10 more hours and just make sure it's perfect. I'm gonna send it to my friend Chance and he's gonna do an awesome sound design, which sound design really makes a video. Audio is so important in videos and, he, and he's gonna do an amazing job. He did the last video that I posted to my Instagram. We'll just show a little bit of it right there. So that's everything from us for this BTS shoot. If you guys like this episode of Rotorette, do make sure that you like and subscribe and definitely comment down below if you have a project coming up and if there's any questions that you guys have, we'll be in the comments answering them. Let's go ahead and play the final video.